We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast. Check it, man. Check it, check it, check it, man. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. Walk on. Hey, man, we got two special guests, man. Yeah, man, we got two special guests, man. Hey, man, we got OG Big Red. Right, man. Hey, man, and we got my boy A-Town Mike in the building, man. Yes, sir. Say, man, say, man, what's up, man? I'm in ATL, man. We pulled up a little, you know, late. Yeah, everybody was in Miami at the Loud. What is that thing called? Rolling Loud. Rolling Loud. I pulled up and Rolling Loud and took a lot of the people. And Trey Day in Houston. You know, Trey Day. You got Trey. Out. I'm like, man, where about at? But then it still was going down. You know what I'm saying? This city don't sleep. It's like Vegas, right? That's right. Up all night. Up all night. Yeah. Up all night. Yeah. Up all night that's, with eight so time that's what he do. Up all night with eight time Mike. Yeah. So what? So so that's what. That's a good question. Like, so eight time Mike. What uh? What what a do? What a, How do a dude go out on a Tuesday night? Oh man, Tuesday night. You see what I'm saying? It's one of the uh, longest running nights that I've been having going on with a bunch of members of my crew, Tracy Big Deal and Blue Flame Lounge. So Tuesday night in the city is like Blue Flame, Untouchable Tuesday. Blue Flame. Blue Flame, man. Bro, when I put up a Blue Flame, I was, that was about, what, seven years ago? What? I'm gonna check this thing out, you know what I'm talking about? And I pulled up, man, you know what I'm saying? I got yeah. out, I was like, man, it's going down up in here. Right. But I, I, you know, at first I thought, it, cause I heard it, the rappers made it so big, I thought when I got over there, it was gonna be humongous, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. But it wasn't that big. But, but the vibe But the vibe big. was right. I was, the vibe, the was, vibe was right, but then, I went back then. They say it's uh, what they say it is now, King of Diamonds. No, no, no. no I'm talking about no. I'm talking about the the V Live. V Live changed the King oh, of yeah, Diamonds. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So so I was like, that was real. Like had three floors in it. And I was like, I'm trying to figure it out. But my main thing was in 07, 08 when I was at. Club Strokers, nigga, that was my spot. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, man, straight. listen, bro. I, I heard about Shorty Red on the track and everything when I was yeah, in the thing. I'm like, up. man, these niggas here, they jamming in here. And 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 the biggest thing that I liked about it, cause I was coming from Dallas, everything was dark. They had the damn lights on in there. Mm -hmm. I said, man, they got the lights on in here. You. <laughs> That was crazy, yeah, man. You gotta see. They want you to see what's I going on. I didn't now. know that. Like, we were used to the lights being off. That's nah. right. We ain't nobody, nah, nah. yeah, we didn't know. Well, I'm like, man, the lights on in here. See, that was a new world for me. Yeah, booty club, you got to see something. You know what <laughs> in, the, in the regular club, you just grind. You don't need to see, to turn the lights down. Hey. If you go to any regular club, you need to have them lights low. Yeah. In that booty club, we got to have them thing halfway for sure. But yeah, Magic mm -hmm. City got them halfway. They didn't have, unless they changed, because that was about, I, that was about three, four years mm -hmm. ago I went there. Mm -hmm. And it was darker in there. Yeah, everything done changed though since the pandemic. You gotta come out now though, since seven years ago, Blue Flame done remodeled. Magic wow. City done did a little change wow. inside. So it's gonna be a different vibe for you when you come back next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so what, okay. Man, let, just tell me a little bit about how you came up on, I'm gonna go to you next, but on your side of town, um, how you grew up as a youngster in, in, in A-Town, man. Uh, see me, man. My name is A-Town Mike. A-Town Mike. And I grew up around the city. Like, I lived in so many, I moved around a lot growing up. I lived in so many sides of towns, all different zones, you know, and I experienced like a lot of different levels of growth and just sides of town and how things go. I grew I live, I'm from the east side. Uh, I spent a lot of time on the north side over there, like Pufer Highway area. And there was a little area that was still like hood. Although Buckhead and Lennox is up the corner, but there's still a little small projects over here. Where Mexicans, blacks, Chinese, all type of people live yeah. and up and coming, you know, on the rise people too. So yeah, man, it was uh it was diverse, you know what I'm saying? It was wonderful, you know what I'm saying? It was diverse growing up. I love that that north side of town because it was like you get to meet people that was not on East Atlanta, that wasn't in the hood. Folks ain't they scared to come where I'm really from. Yeah. But on Beaver Highway, you could mingle a little bit. You might catch JD studio around the corner over there where I live. There was a lot of people on the rise in that area and it really helped me build like relationships and character early and hustle for myself. You feel wow. me? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's dope, man. So hey, OG Big Red, what what hey. happened, man? How you get that name, first of all? I wanna know what how'd you get that name? That's a hell of a name to stand behind. Straight up. You gotta stand on your ten toe with a name like OG Big Red. That's what I'm saying. Like 
So originally, my name was Dirty Red. So everybody in the city know me as Dirty Red. It was okay. like my rap days in front of the neighborhood. So I'm from 325 and Road. Okay. Adamsville, right around the corner. Okay. okay. So growing up, my next door neighbor, Edna Bailey, was like, uh, this little light skinned dude used to go get dirty. So they called me Dirty Red. So that stuck as a kid. You know what I'm saying? So as we get older, you know, I'm rapping, I'm doing my thing. I feel like that title didn't fit me no more because everybody didn't get it. Like everybody didn't get that. I wasn't no dirty person. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't get the story backdrop. Yeah. Like, if I don't give you the backdrop, you don't know. You just exactly. I make it assume. So, you know, I started dip, dipping and dabbing with my nonprofit kids in the neighborhood. And one of the kids one day was just like, man, you OG Big Red. And it was like, boom, that's it. Uh, it's That's it. That's it. I represent the community. I represent the kids where I'm from. I represent escaping an environment that's hard to escape. You see what I'm saying? So that's what OG is supposed to do. Come back and teach you the way out. Yeah. Not show you some bullshit. Come on, teach your way out. So how can you? Show, how, okay, how, the only way show. you know how to teach somebody is if you've been through some things. Oh, man. So, so tell us, just to give us a little bit of background. Man, I don't know where to start. I three mean, dog. I grew up, I, three dog. Three dog. Three dog. <laughs> you know what I'm I grew up in one of the worst environments in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. My, my mother and my daddy was on crack cocaine. You feel what I'm saying? My mom was addicted to it all my life. Then she got convicted of armed robbery. Wow. Went to prison for 20 years, died in the cell after 13 years. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Three years sure. ago, she died in the cell. You feel me? Um, Long live that. You know, me and my mom were doing time together. I was facing 30 years at one point. She in one prison, I'm over here. We writing letters. You feel me? Yes, sir. So I'm about taking my life away, my freedom away. But luckily, you know what I'm saying? Because like, I was in the street doing woo, 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so, that's what it is. Luckily, I was smart enough to have some OGs around that, that, that told me what it takes to play this game. You know what I'm saying? It takes like a whole lot of bag. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, 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 yeah. You got to have some money. You want to go home. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I had a little money to go home. So that just changed my life at that period. You know what yeah, saying? yeah. It just, it just totally made me be like, okay, I got my kids, my daughter, my son. So, okay, you got your daughter with you. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. It's like, I can't be in prison. That's it, that's it. Mm -hmm. my mama. I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Man. I swapped it out. I had to swap it out. Swap out Dirty Red for OG Big Red. Here we go. <laughs> Already, <laughs> man. Where was your dad during all this time? So, Pops was a good dude. He just was struggling with things. You know? So, my dad, is, both of his brothers killed themselves when I was like eight, nine. One of them jumped off 285 Spaghetti Junction. Mm. Wow. Uh, the other one shot himself in the head. My mom was addicted to crack. So, as a man now, I go through shit with my family and my kids. You know what I'm saying? I understand. Like, that's a lot to take on as a mm. man. So Pops, you know, he, he did with him there with the drugs at first. Then he got his shit straight. Mm. But then he got his shit straight and then his health started declining. So him, and I was in the foster home growing up too. Wow. So I was in the foster home from birth. So until I was nine, I didn't really know my real mama was my mama. I was calling my foster mama my mama, you know what I'm saying? So the crazy thing is they all died six months in the same year, in six mm. months. Wow. Foster mama died first, daddy died second, then my mama died. Like, bum, 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 bum. It was back to back to back. Yeah, wow. 2017 was hard. Wow. And I was right there with him. I was right there with him. Straight up. And we always had this thing in common because me growing up, my mom was in prison too. Straight up. And uh, you know, my mom used to write me in prison, draw on the letters, had the beautiful letters. I was like different from everybody in high school because you know what I'm saying? I was like somewhat of a foster kid too because I went from home to home. Yeah. Every year my uncle took care of me, my mama, yeah. this person took care of me. Every family sibling that I got all raised me some, some point in my life. You feel me? So like that goes back to being understanding like diversity and yeah. upbringing. Cause you know, when you raised by one parent, you gonna get that one, you know how it is, but little aunt do it this way, grandma gonna do yeah. it this way, mama ain't having this, sister ain't having this, you feel me? So you gotta respect multiple personalities of ways mm -hmm. in life and just mm -hmm. growing up, just like my brother said, you know, having like foster mama not knowing, mm -hmm. you know, we both had parents in prison, you feel me? Wow. My mama, you feel me? And that was different growing up, you know, just having not no day ones with you like that that you really want, but it made us stronger. It made you stronger. It made you stronger, but yeah. with all the things that you've been through and then seeing your parents going through what they went through, how are you trying to change that trend and not have your kids follow the same oh, trend? So how I'm trying to change that narrative, that's what Summer Safe come in there. So Summer Safe, that's my nonprofit organization with the right. kids. So we deal with inner city youth and it started in my neighborhood that I'm from. So many people was getting killed. And then every summer, like one of my childhood friends just got killed out there on his birthday last wow. month. You feel what I'm saying? So Excellent. long live Dirty Slim. So um, I felt like it was my duty because if I if I made it out and, and my mama didn't make it out, you know, I got to go back over here and get them something. I can't keep giving them destruction. And to me, my rap music was getting, bringing on destruction. You know what I'm saying? So I backed up, boom. Wow. How can I bring on ins inspiration? How can I do that instead of expiration? Big fat. And man, it was like, God, 
one of my partners, Lil Bay Kid from 94.5, he one of our business partners. He Shout called me, he's like, yo, I just seen the kids throw a school bus in your neighborhood. That way. You from over there, they respect you. Let's go over there and do something for the kids. Wow. <laughs> and boom, it sparked from that one to this. We've been over just doing it ever since then for the love. Summer safe. Summer safe. Yeah. Yo. You see, I like that because a lot of times people tend to want to do make a change in the communities, but not being from the community or not anybody in the community yeah. knowing you, you go to that community and say, hey, stop the violence, stop it. The, they look at you like, you, you don't yeah. know what's going on. You don't know, yeah. right. I got to feed my family. I got to do what I got to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you don't want the violence. You don't want kids getting innocently killed That's or, right. you know, certain things happening. So it's like, how can you change that? Because the dope dealers or people who doing the shooting or whatever, they're like, well, I got to do what I got to do to support my... Exactly. And you can't... So how it. are you putting money in my pocket exactly. to help my family? How are you going to show me a way out? And that's the thing. So when we come into the neighborhood, so we got a program called a Give a Kid an Option Program. Well, we got financial literacy programs, skill building. I'm talking about... Uh, Man, you name it. Shoot films, not guns. Shoot films, not guns. Shoot not hoops, guns. Not guns. Saying, Golf, man. not guns. I love you that. Feel me? You know, so we give giving kids different options to see. Because I know when I was growing up, the only options I had to see was the drug dealer that was on New right. Jack City, uh -huh. the basketball player, the drug dealers in the neighborhood. Yeah, sure. We wasn't seeing the other options. You know what I'm saying? Or a football player. Those are your three options. Drug dealer, rapper, football player. That's what we're doing. And football don't work. Okay, I'm going to say adult then. No, no, real talk. I, but, I, um, go ahead. Okay. But with doing that and giving them options, do you also bring in counselors for the parents? Because mm, for the main fact that you're telling these kids that they can do that, but when they go back home, the parents tell them, you ain't nothing. What you That's think? Because doing. you think you better than me? Because a lot of parents feel like if their kids start to strive and doing better, that they gonna feel like they're better than their parents because their parents can't give them something that you as a stranger is allowing them to have. You know what I mean? And these kids look up to their parents more than maybe even you. Mm -hmm. All that peer pressure, their friends saying all sorts of stuff because we, he's went to um, juveniles and talked to them about when you get out, you have to condition your mind before you get out. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, when I get out, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And like I've told him, I said, let me tell you, you have these programs that go out and talk to these juvenile kids and once a week or every day, but as soon as you finish that call, their homeboy called them and said, man, I got you when you get I out. I got that yeah. this, I got that that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this work in your hand. Da, 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 da. So you fighting all of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But how can you fight that? Yes, you're doing that positive um, for them, but you still need to educate those parents. Talk to those parents or those influencers. Those are the ones you need to get on your team as well. That's real. Man, That's it's real. so real. I mean, real. With, with what you were saying, Charleston White is the one that gave me the opportunity to go over there and talk to those kids. Mm -hmm. um, and he's uh, one of my one of the guys that I look look to uh, when I'm trying to help somebody because he bring a lot of kids. That's his thing that he does. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Yeah, I follow him. But, but me and him, we rock out a lot of times. And a lot of people see one side of him, but the side I deal with is the side where we always venture in to try to help them kids. And what we we start to see is, like you said, the parent, not just the parents, this one guy we had to get out because we promised all these kids they would have somewhere to go when they came Their guardian, out. really, <laughs> whoever and their guardian whoever is. their guardian is because the mother and the father passed away. These are young kids that's locked up. And then mm -hmm. they come out and I'm looking at Charles and I'm like, I'm saying, man, this is going to be great. And let's give them some clothes and let's do this. Let's put them on the show if they want to rap let's give him. and he like man we we gonna lose him i'm like what do you mean he said man, i've been doing this for years man and he said the biggest thing is them not having that support system mm -hmm. when they when they come home you know the mother one kid we just had his mother and dad passed away and he's with his, his, his sister, sister his, his aunt his older sister his, yeah is this his aunt mm, his sister okay. that's his older sister and she really like going through you can tell she has uh mental issues and mm -hmm. and she's she's fussing and mad and angry and she's still needing counseling herself as you was alluding mm -hmm. to and that's the stuff that you start de dealing with when you're dealing with trying to help mm -hmm. really help because mm -hmm. what i i found in charleston and i hate to keep bringing him up but that, that's he's the type of dude that what happens is he really out here trying to figure out a way to help and so he engages in it strongly, not come take pictures and say, that's we've right. done something, but that's really right. mm, he'll right. go back today, tomorrow, the next day. And see, that's what I'm saying. I'm there like that. And that's the Fun difference. All the way. And then, so let me go back to your point with the, with the parents. See, I feel like the kids, the seeds. So I'm getting the seeds before they grow. 
parents are already grown. They're the trees. They don't like to listen. You know, That's so I true. I can't make you do nothing you don't want to do. But if I get these seeds and I just show them a little something, boom, I water a little bit, boom, that tree going to grow. That tree is growing already. Your tree already grown. But the parents can be yeah. either be the water or the poison. But no, you that's why we got already grown though. So you, you gotta can't give grow it. no more. Like this mm -hmm. tree is only gonna grow so far, it's gonna die every year and come back. But this tree is still growing. So yeah. I feed this tree, it's like a computer. Man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, 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 don't but think I like that. You, no, no, no. What I'm about to say, I said I disagree. I know, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is that don't think like that because as long as you have life, you can grow. I agree. True. I understand that some people are harder to change because they're stuck in their ways. Don't ever give up on anyone. It's easier to convert a child than it is for an adult. True. But like even my mom, my mom is 70 some years old. And when she do certain things, I always say, you're not too old to change. Stop making that an excuse. Because, yeah. you know, they always say, oh, I'm yeah. too old to change. I can't. That's a lie. If I stay consistently on her, she will start to change because... We as human beings, a lot of times we do things and don't see our own faults. Right. But if you keep saying the person, keep telling them what their fault is, yeah. they will start to take awareness. Like example, I, maybe I don't even think I stutter because I, I don't hear it. But then somebody say, you know what, you stutter. And then somebody else say, you stutter. So every time I'm talking, I'm listening to myself and I'm like, dang, I do stutter. Mm. I got to practice to try to change that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you have to first be aware of what your faults are. Yeah, I think association brings about assimilation as well. That too. I think that when, like, like even Charleston, you say you follow him, but a lot of times people tell him they don't like him. I don't like him, and I don't want, you know, why are you around him? But they forget about the power of God. Mm -hmm. You Come see on, what I'm yeah. saying? And because sure. if I, I know if I'm around somebody, I'm a, I'm a hustler. Mm -hmm. I come from the same thing. I've mm -hmm. done some worse things. Mm -hmm. So I don't forget where I come from. And I know that God used me to lead somebody out of darkness. Mm -hmm. It don't matter who it is. It don't matter how many people are being influenced by whoever. It doesn't matter. What happens is the goodness in me, the love in me, mm -hmm. a cover mm -hmm. a multitude of sins. And I know it's real. Mm -hmm. So I don't play with it. The power of God is more powerful than any man. Anything that you could ever do, anything that ever, you're not bigger than God to me. So I feel like God can use me. He uses mm -hmm. whoever he will to influence whoever he will. So I am that one that can help another. And I'm going to always be. Right. All them brothers you've seen come through here today, the thing that God does with me, you, you, you. I'm just going to rock with you mm -hmm. and you're going to find my balance and the way that I carry myself is going to be influential to a positive change. Mm -hmm. I really know that. Yes, yeah. sir. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's how I feel. Yeah. That right. And I've seen it. So that's why. And, and then I've been in, I've been in a trap. I've been, I, I, I got busted with keys of cocaine. You know what I mean? I, I, I understand what it is to, 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 to face issues and face things in life. So who better? Yeah, and that's what I feel. Who better to Who tell better? the story? Who better to come? Who they gonna back? listen to? Right, exactly. Right, and even if they don't, I'm gonna give it a hell of a shot because mm -hmm. right. I did everything else to my fullest. I've never done. It. I, I I'm an extremist. I I'm either in or out. Right. I'm either with you or against you. I ain't no that's in between me. with that's me. me. You know what I'm saying? I'm either turned all I'm the way up. Cold. I'm you turned all Charleston, the way out. My mama you say Charleston that. White was your boy? Yeah, yeah. Hey, he's hey, the same man. way. He, 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 I can tell. I see the vibe. He's the same way. I see the vibe and all. My yeah. mama used to always tell me that growing up, you either hot or you cold, and I'll never be in between. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's how I always lived my life. When I was in the street, I was fully in the street. You know I'm saying, like, I used to always equate myself back then. Like, on Minnesota Society, I was old dog. Yeah. And the reason why, because old dog, the only one that lived, if you pay attention to I him, know it. Because he knew who he was. Everybody else was juggling. Everybody yeah. Everybody was straddling the fence. Yeah. Kane don't know what he want to do. Sharif over here hanging out. He was going to go play football. Everybody that was unsure got killed. Wow. Except for old dog. I like that. Because he was sure about who he was. I like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's dope. They're real. Yeah. 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 That old dog statement deep, man. You know what I'm saying? You a lot of people don't get that when they watch that movie. They don't get that. They get that old dog. No, 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 no. He escaped the jail and all that other stuff because he knew who he was walking in who he was. So God blessed him in who he was. And then he, he didn't go to jail for murder. He didn't get killed. None of that. Everybody around him got killed because they was walking in who they were. That's it, and, oh. and I think that's dope. But and, and and he'll be the guy that changes and helps so many people. Come on, man, that's yeah. the one right on, there. Man. That's the one. That's like me. I'm, I feel the same energy because they they give up on you. Yep. You the one everybody talking about. They don't expect you to live past 20, 25 oh, years yeah. old. They say you that boy. That's that one right there. Everybody in the neighborhood, the old folks look at you and they they say he the one. He ain't. And I was that guy. Mm. And now I'm the guy who they look at now and be like, we so proud of you. Yeah. 
God put us through <laughs> situations <laughs> you as examples. You know what I mean? Because if you didn't go through those things, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be able to touch some of these kids who, because then if you've never been through, you've never been on the street or whatever, and you don't tell a kid, man, you can't this, da, 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 da. They'd be like, who are you? But when you tell a man, I did time, I did this, I did mm-hmm. that, they're like, okay, oh, okay, OG, okay. what's okay. up? Right. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So you it, it, makes a, it makes a difference. Yeah, you can relate. You really can relate. You're yeah. not just, I, I'm most people trying to talk about them and I talk to them anyway. Mm-hmm. Most people not going to go in the neighborhoods where they at because they don't understand. When you've been in the neighborhood, that's why when I go wherever, if we go to Chicago, if we go to Vegas, mm-hmm. if we go wherever, I'm trying to find out what a hood is. Because I'm a hood cat. Every you know time. Yeah, yeah, what a hood. That's what the phone is. The same way. Oh, no. Man, we're going through the hood. That's right. Let's go. Yeah, that's that's, that's why our people are. Time. They just yeah. calling it hood because it's it. our people there. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. We ain't looking for no problem. We just actually want to love our people. That's it. When you get older and you evolve, you like, man, you know what I'm saying? I know what that means now. This is mm-hmm. it's a stigma, it's a stereotype. It's just something they saying just because it's us. And it's mm-hmm. people like me and you that basically can make the difference to help our people, man. Hey man. It's Period. A hood. a hood. What does a hood do? Go up. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of people in the middle. You got a bunch of things in the end. You got all this going on. It's just people in the in the melting pot together. Goes. But it always go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the hood only goes up. That's yeah. True. You know what I'm <laughs> so what's up with uh, when I come to Atlanta? I'm gonna tell you what the biggest stigma I always hear, and I wasn't around for the face, so I'm not even gonna play with it. BMF, I hear about these guys. Right, wow. a, uh, yeah, I'm just telling you what I hear. Mm-hmm. You hear the stories, man. If you'd have been, you know, man, or you see it on the internet. I man. saw a guy in the mall wearing a T-shirt. BMF. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. Is it? I mean, explain this stuff. So Black mafia family. No, no. I'm, I mean, just basically, it seemed like a brotherhood. It seemed like see because people. Let me tell you something man people will take something and, and they look at only the bad out of it they won't even remember the good out of it mm-hmm. i'm being real mm. I, and i don't play those games you know what i'm saying i try to flip the narrative to say you know what came out of this good what came out this positive mm. were anybody buying any bikes in the neighborhood mm. was somebody helping any kids during that time in the neighborhood you know they were because our heart is like that mm-hmm. yeah that's what we do Mm-hmm. Think about that for a second. Yeah, right. It don't matter what we, even when I was hustling, I'm still going to take care of whoever the young boy is. And he ain't hustling. I'm just like, here, go get you this. So go do that. That's what we do, man. Yeah, right. So where, where was those moments at when we talk about this BMF movement? Oh, those moments was always. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, that's, that's the that part. That was like something that was just like second nature. That wasn't even no, I, that, back then you couldn't televise. Yeah. Back like then it wasn't no no phones. Like it was phones, but it wasn't no Instagram. Or, but it was you know. a billboard out there I heard yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a, um, yeah, yeah. me being around it as well, because I'm I'm from that era like well, like the nightlife. I was a part of it. I've been in the nightlife business so long and when I was a jit back then coming up, I was probably 17, 18, getting in the twenty one and up clubs and those guys had the city on Smash. And at the same time, uh what I feel like they did for the people was made them us feel like we could all have this. Yes, like wow. they made us believe that you could be rich. Wow. Like you never had a Rose Perrier bottle for. You feel me? You're about to have one today. <laughs> you never had, you never here. Yeah. Take it. Just this is like they showed us, if you really paid attention, like, and then one envious a hater, you would have took that motivation as, bro, I could have it too. Mm-hmm. These boys showing us that this is obtainable. Mm-hmm. Like, we ain't never seen niggas do nothing like this. Yeah. That that one rapping using corporate money or some money that came that was that was owned by somebody else. You feel me? These boys, these boys were self made. Yeah, yeah. And they were doing mega things that. I'm talking about the biggest rapper, <laughs> Diddy. I don't care who you is in the club. When no boy, it. when no boy came in, you they don't. don't with, but Diddy just pump fake y'all with a name. I don't do that, but he might. You know him being him. Diddy got them bottles sent to him. Them boys came in and bought all they bottles. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. feel me? Hundred bottles. Every black man in the club in their crew with a, a <laughs> no cups. <laughs> uh, we empowering yo. Not not yeah. saying that in a bottle, but it's just. Whatever we have, you if I got it, you got, you got it. it. And I liked it that. That's if I'm one. Ryan Lamb, somebody Ryan BM for and so we all got some. You feel me? Yeah. yeah everybody can't have them. But, but it's, they ain't nothing less than what right. everything that's, behind that's me. That's a good, good subject to th- talk about. Like, do you think that's also had an inf- uh, uh, effect on what we're dealing with today as far as what Atlanta de- developed into? Most definitely. You see where I'm coming from? Because yeah. you don't hear it, you don't really hear that a lot, but it is. Most definitely. It birthed a lot of stuff. Entrepreneurship is all you're mm-hmm. talking about. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I, I get what. Meeks just had a, 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 okay. a, a way, you know what I'm saying? Like he just had a way 
to tell his story to make you believe. And then when you see it from somebody that you're coming from, they come from where you come from, you're gonna do it, you're gonna believe it and you're gonna put that same action he put forth. If you ain't, you stupid. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Action, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't see that and see the light and see the glow in it and not get riled up and be like, oh, okay, yeah, you know. I'm it, telling it, you, man. It ain't, I, it ain't I, for I, everybody. It was something that everybody down here respected. I don't care yeah. what, who you was and not down here, across just, the I world. Say, right. Across, across the here. world. <laughs> uh, you, the, world. Uh, the United States for sure. Yeah. Like, it, you could not deal with anything without talking about these guys when they was on the streets and when you know when they was locked in and they was at their peak i call it the peak that's right because there was a peak they about you to have the bmf stars you what you what you think yeah, about yeah. it you, what, you tapping into it you're gonna be watching it yeah i watch it you watch it i mean I, at the end of the day i don't really watch a lot of tv because i'm out here living mm -hmm. you know and living real. real life mm -hmm. it's real come on man <laughs> right yeah, yeah we have tv, TV baby. i don't be watching right. it like that i Let's, think after the pandemic is when we stop Right. That's right. Because during the pandemic, you had to reevaluate your life mm. and see what you're giving too much attention to mm -hmm. and what you not giving enough attention to, mm -hmm. which need to have more attention. And you just start to do some restructuring and say, you know what, let me cut this off. We don't even watch news that much anymore because no. news always be like bad news and stuff like that. If you want to see the news, just jump on Facebook. They'll, if it's they something, you, yeah. you go, you. that needs to be known, they're going to tell you. The hood news going to tell you first. Right. Or CNN will tell you, you know, world news real quick. If you just like once a month, you're like, okay, let me see what's going on. Right. But other than that, TV is so addictive where you sit down and watch show after show after show when you really turn around and look at how many hours you just wasted that could have been something progressive like what did you get out of watching TV how yeah, did that benefit it. you right, well, let's right, go right. or benefit somebody else it benefited them by making money off of your views that's about it well, but it's, it's not same, it's not helping it's the same nobody thing with these bad boys right here mm -hmm. ain't no different right it can it can cause you you have to remember we, we've had moments where i'll be like just leave the phone at the house don't take it yes, because you just want to see how life feels without without it, it. we got to have balance this even is too if you got too much of this going on there's a lack of balance i feel like the number one tv consumer in the world is senior citizens older people and people in prison I yeah, right now, just like the radio, sure. just like the radio, it's the same thing. It, that's a, that's the age group. So networks are still going to make, they're going to win. Mm -hmm. Just like they, you know, they were winning even more because everybody's watched TV and there wasn't so many resources to watch whatever mm -hmm. you want to watch. Mm -hmm. But now it's like they know, okay, look, well, okay, that's cool. We just going to get our money off the people, the older generation and the people in prison. But even where TV is concerned, do you notice that everything is going from regular TV to they're putting all the movies on, on Amazon, mm -hmm. on Hulu, on Netflix, because all those apps are where? You're streaming on, right? your, yeah. phone. on your phone. On your phone. Yeah. Netflix, oh, I can quickly watch a movie. I can watch my episode. I can this, I can that. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're not easily accessed to a phone, mm. then you're not making it nowadays. Nowadays, everybody's making their own apps. Mm. If you have a business, mm -hmm. you need to make an app for or yourself. A website, right. Or not, not even websites as much. An app because this generation has gotten more lazy to a website. I mean, I gotta go on Takes too far Safari too, or from whatever and yeah. then go find the website, too many, steps, website, to to too many steps. You have an app, you uh, download the app, click the app, boom, you already there. Yeah, so so, um, do you feel like, do you like where music is at right now? Do you guys? I love it. I mean, it's evolution. Put it like this, where I'm at now, right? With God and the universe. Mm -hmm. I judge nothing and judge no one. Mm -hmm. So what you do is what you do, and how you do it is how you do it. Mm -hmm. My old self would have been this. Ah, I hate it. I can't stand it. Yeah, you feel me? My Drive me crazy. I mean, I love it. If you love it, that's cool. Because that's for you. It's not for me. Wow. So I don't have to listen to it to like it. You don't. It's not dude, for man. me. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can listen to it and hear something that I like. Like, um, man, this is on my mama, bro. Like, listen, I used to be one of the worst dudes in the world. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? But now when I come home, I remember my daddy used to come back to you to me, let me answer your question about my pops. So pops got his stuff together when I was about 14 and 15. But because he had been out of my life all these years, I wanted to be like, man, you nigga, you nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was trying, but I was rebelling. Don't hang in the hood. Fuck that, I'm going to the hood. Ah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga, I get taken off the basketball game because I'm hanging in the hood. He didn't have moved to the white folks neighborhood at this time. So I got to experience the hood and something different. Don't get it twisted. But my mind, everything is a mindset. Like you were saying earlier, before you leave jail, you gotta be start here. My mind was like, like I said about parents, I, I'm one of the people, if I say fuck that, it's fuck that. Nothing you can say, nothing you can say. If I say fuck that, it's what it is. And God know that, you know what I'm saying? That's but you're hurting yourself more than you're hurting them. Of course, you know what I'm saying? So boom, I'm going in and about back and forth. 
my daddy like stay away from this neighborhood. And I couldn't see it then. Mm. Could not see it then. Now I see it because now I, my daddy used to be the same way. Cut that rap music off. Da, da, da. And I couldn't see it then. I never thought I would be the father that walk in my house and tell my son to cut a rap record off. Man, I might have walked in and he listened to King Von the other day. Man, boy, cut it. It was just sounding so destructive. Mm. I was like, man, cut that shit off. But it brought me right back to when my daddy called me listening to Master P. Yeah. The true album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was talking about selling crack cocaine. Yeah. My daddy was like, he this is the same nigga that sold crack to your mama and you and you big up in this nigga. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I get it. These same I'll niggas you run into in the hood that say they love you, got your mama out here turning tricks for this crack cocaine for this wow. rock. And you mm -hmm. smart you love these niggas. And but they don't love you like you think they do. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, whoa. That was that was the irony of it because I'm going to hang with some niggas I think quote unquote love me, but these niggas selling my mom crack on the low, which is destroying my family. But they wow. don't give no fuck about it because they got kids too. That's mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. But it took me. To it's get all older. about feeding their family. They exactly. do what they have to do, and a lot of times you have some people they'll feed the poison to the masses, but their own family they won't really. I mean, that's what the government do. Right. So so that's why that's why when I got older, I seen that I couldn't hold my own people accountable for something they learned from something they was taught. Facts. The government taught them to do that. Yep. So guess what? As I got older and I teach my kids, them, you got to unlearn all that bullshit you've been taught by the television that tells you a vision. Mm -hmm. You got to pay attention to these words they put in front of you because all of these words mean something. Yeah. So they Media all have a myth. spell. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, spelling is spelling for a reason. Look for the underlining it's, reasoning yeah, behind exactly. everything. Exactly. So you gotta, when you're talking about spelling, it's speaking stuff into existence. But you're talking about positivity and you're talking about feeding um, the youth with something positive to hold right. on to. But then I know that you are in acting right now, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the show that you're doing, how? It's very contradictory to what I'm doing. And I'm that, you, <laughs> that's where I'm getting it. to what I'm doing. But it wouldn't be acting if it wasn't. Exactly. So, I'm acting. This is but nice. then even these rappers and stuff like that, they can say it's acting because people always tell these kids it's not real, it's not real. But these kids look at all the rap music and be like, oh, I want to do that. I want to be like nah. da, 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 da. These niggas but, ain't real. <laughs> right. you, but the kids, but the kids, but the kids are not, not looking real. at it like that. The kids are looking at it like, that's what my life, I want that life to be. I want, that guy's oh, out there man. killing and shooting and nah, doing whatever. That's because not the same. Music and mm -hmm. acting is different because people don't grow up want to be like the Terminator. They don't want to grow up <laughs> being like Rambo for real. But right. music can kind of do that sometimes. So it's like, you got to be careful with the music because music is actually like a different vibe. Yeah. It's yeah. a different spiritual yeah, connection. But I, can't, I, can't, I can't agree because you just- And I can't, some, yeah. Let me tell you why I can't agree with that, what you just said. Okay. It's because the scenarios you use with the damn Terminator. <laughs> Ain't no niggas want to be like no but white I'm boy. Just no saying, one. And who else well, did you say? A lot of people don't, uh, whatever. Uh, Everybody wanted to be JJ. Robo. They were all nah, in dynamite nah, 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 and everything uh, else I back in the day. Okay, no, but I got to pull something. I did, honestly, want to be Rambo in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying, no, so I'm so I really would do some like the Terminator. Yeah. I was Rambo, like, nigga, I was like, like Rambo. But I was, I was coming at it. I was really coming at him about the fact that these right. two white guys, <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no, no black. That's kids. why I went to you yeah. left too. I said that. I went love for a reason too. I ain't say uh, uh, no, Jesus I, shit or yeah. 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 But I think it's a difference between those big movies compared to the smaller movies. True. When I say that, like when I was asking the young lady earlier, she ever watched the Money show and Money and Violence? That was my favorite show. Okay, and I loved it. I hated it. I hated it when it stopped, but. We were hooked on watching that show. Yeah, we watched that. But watching that show and I seen those guys, I'm like, Robin, I know in, in my yeah. mind the way how they were so good at it, and maybe because it was all, it's a lower. I'm like, nah, they do that for real. They do that for real. They do that for real. Let me give you this. Just like you have a pass, you got a pass. Everybody got a pass. Mm -hmm. So my character reflects not only my past but those around me past that I have seen growing up. Mm -hmm. so, so when I'm acting. I can act like any character, but guess what? My daddy was this, my mama was a pimp, my yep. nigga up the corner was a drug dealer, nigga down next door was a Uncle killer. Like this. this nigga next door shot shot in front of us when I was I nine. seen it. I done seen it all. I ain't you know, have to do it. Saying? I done seen it. Exactly. So even if I done done it, what I ain't, I could just put myself yeah. back to when I was nine years old. And I remember little Trey Trey shot little TT in front of everybody in the yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. Or I can put myself back when Lil Trey Trey robbed Lil TT in front of everybody in the right. neighborhood and made him take off all his clothes. Well, I can put saying? myself in when Miami boys were coming to Atlanta nah, trying to rob us. And, take us and, they and my, my brothers and my sisters, I live with my uh, brothers and sisters at the time. And you know, they was doing a little hustle thing. And I don't know, we used to always have these house parties. It's funny that I'm into parties now and doing events because I was the life of the party as a kid. 12, 11 years old, we having house parties and I'm coming outside, coming in there, sneaking out the room and come, yeah, I turn up on these folks like, oh, that little kid going crazy. Been a star since I was a kid. And at the same time, 
uh, we had doing, we had been doing so many house parties and turning up that some some out of towns was coming. This was when the era when the out of towns was coming up here, thinking Atlanta was sweet, and they yeah. tried to come yeah, out. Man, and boy. these guys didn't even get nothing. But growing up as a young jit, having a gun in my head, watching my brother get shot, I can I know how to act that type of thing out. Being a kid with a gun in your head, like I'm gonna kill the kid if you don't bring me all of the whatever we came here for. Yeah. Even though they didn't get it, thank God, because my neighbor came out and things happened in the way they happened because it was in God's hands. But he, I understand where we coming from. We've seen it Man. in our life and we know how to portray I things. I just that. know that the, the things that you guys are speaking on is what happened in a lot of black neighborhoods. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. every hood. You know what I'm saying? You know, I like DJ Quick when he say, it's just like Compton. Mm -hmm. it, it, that song meant a lot because as he was speaking about these different places he was traveling to, he started seeing the fact that everything he was looking at was reality of the hood and the black people he dealt with in his neighborhood. It's the same. It is. That's why you go to the hood because it's like everything is the same, man. Mm -hmm. And every you can anywhere you are at. I hate it when I seen Nipsey. You know, I met Nipsey a few times, but I hated to see him in front of his store because I own stores and and. I hated the fact of seeing him die in front of his store like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and but I understood why it happened because mm -hmm. I know already that when I say something, even in front of my store, being a store, a business owner, I said this earlier, it amplifies. It's more yep. stronger. Being who Nipsey was, yep. when you say you a snitch, yep. it takes on a whole nother level yep. of what you say. And then my whole story, I always say about that guy that done that, um, his whole story was Man, I know Nipsey. That's his story. Man, I know Nipsey. But Nipsey take that away that day, really. Mm. When he say, hey, man, you a snitch, man. Don't come in here. Don't, don't come on my block. If you ever been to Cali, you know how these niggas talk, too. Mm -hmm. They really get hype about what they say to you. Ain't no, hey, man, don't come in the neighborhood. It's like, hey, homie, you know, it's it's different, bro. Yeah. The checks. I know. They yeah. get straight with it. Yes, sir. I you just know? left there. So you know I'm telling the truth. Story. New York the same and way. And people are like, no, he just he didn't say nothing really to him like that. No, bro, don't, people don't talk like that. When they out there, they really bring their passion mm -hmm. and what they say. And then for me to say, see that Nipsey or something could say something like that to a regular dude, because he was just a regular dude, um, a snitch, whatever it may have you. Expect, you know, it's still, I've got dudes, I can't say that. I can't say nothing to dudes, because they looking at me, I'm rolling up in the nicest cars with my family, and I'm doing my thing to these people. Am I right? That's right. Think about it. That's they right. look at you on a whole nother That's level. Right. You you doing it. You doing what they would wish they could do. Right. No matter how many people you employ, there's always going to be somebody that's out there that's just like, yeah, I hate on you or just exactly. Envious. But I mean, it's amplified, I think, man. I think with just being who we are as kings and the gods we are, it's about knowing how to watch your mouth. So I'm a, I'm big into the universe. I'm big into what you speak is your existence. I'm True. big into what you think is your existence. So my dog, if you constantly saying f this, f that, fuck this, fuck me, it's gonna come to you. Yeah. Let me give you a prime example. My best friend, the one that just got killed last month on his birthday, he woke up that morning at eight o'clock. It was on Instagram live. Yeah, it's my birthday. I'm blessed to be alive. But to that fuck nigga that did something, since uh, I got it on me, nigga, and I got it on me, and I got it on me, and I, I'm under the I'm under the By 11 o'clock, he was dead. He, he, he wasn't even shot by the nigga that he was talking about. He was shot by an old man that stayed downstairs that we've been on for 20 years. Wow. Because oh. he put that energy out there. He put that wow. energy out there. The old Damn. man was just mad about the motherfucking music being too loud. Wow. Because he'd been up all night. But it's the hood. That's it, and he shot him for that. I've been knowing this nigga 20 years. You turn around and shoot him in front of his kids, his daughter, and everybody was outside in front of him on his birthday wow. when he killed him. Boom. You see what I'm saying? The energy. It's yeah. The energy you put off. That's so crazy. that's why I tell my people around me, watch what you say. Watch what you think. Wow. Because that's what's gonna manifest. Especially mm -hmm. once you start realizing your power as your God you are. Oh, the more you realize it, the more God start making it happen instantaneously. Boom, you think about I this that happen. Man, I don't want the police to get behind me. Boom, there they go. Yeah, he should tell me why all the time. But if you think about the police, they gonna pull they up behind you. I start thinking about those folks. I don't know. I'm not be moving. My OG used to tell me something when I was back in the street so hard, man. Get caught doing what you're supposed to be doing. Wow. And back then, I couldn't even understand that shit. Like, what is he talking about? Mm. But I was always in the trap getting locked up. He's like, nigga, the record label ain't coming to the trap by dope, none of that. <laughs> Why are you in the trap? You a rapper, right? Wow. And I'm like, but I'm from the hood. I'm goddamn, I love my hood. He's like, all right, cool. Boom, back in jail. Mm. Come home. You wanna rap now? I'm gonna go back to the hood. Back in jail. Boom. And I was like, it was a repetition over and over and over and over. I was still doing good in the music, don't get it twisted. So who, who was, I gotta talk about that. Who was some of the people that you work with? Oh man, everybody, anybody like who? still. Okay, so Rick Ross, we done been on tour together, Two Chains. I'm from the, originally from the Attic, from the Dungeon family. That's who okay. pulled me since I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? All of them, CeeLo, 
Big Boy, all of them family members. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? OG King, Floaty. He um, like Dungeon Family, third generation yeah, right I'm here. I'm fourth generation, actually. Yeah. I'm fourth okay. generation Dungeon Family. Mm-hmm. Um, Attic crew and all that. Man, everybody, man. She, I can't even name one. Wow. Except for these new people. I can't name nobody that went on my tour before they got big. You know what I'm wow. saying? Titty Boy, all of them. They was on my tour before they got big. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I brought these folks out, spent a check with them. Looking shows. Feel more. Yeah, like. Promoter and artist. Oh, oh yeah. My boy, yeah. On my own Go label. in. 19 years old. I had my own label and everything. So Killing wow. the country town. Yeah. So who influenced you the most? Got to be outcast. Good, that again, again outcast. Out is it because we're in Atlanta? No, Everybody is saying yeah, outcast. In Texas is UGK. Nah, yeah, I'm because out show. here is yeah, like yeah. everything is outcast. That's real. It, it was UGK. It was outcast. It was MJG and Eight Ball. It might have been my top threes. And then you know, of course, we were about to ask you your top. He three. already he named it. He can't do he that. Already man. Named you it. just he named your top three. He already named it. So is it in that order for real? In that order, just like that. Outcast, UGK. I'm Eight ball with MJG. Yeah. That's real. That's he dope. already named That's it. That's dope. I love yeah. the fact UGK yeah, sure. got in there too. Oh, yeah. And Eight ball MJG yeah. out of Memphis. Yeah. yeah. And Outcast for sure. Big boy. Uh uh. I knew she was Andre say 3000. Oh, three nah. the homie. But I'm a big fan. I love Andre. Hey, I'm, 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 I'm going to lie to you. I'm telling you, Andre is my yeah. guy. I, I love the fact that that, that, that was a dope choice. I got to get yours now. Big I would love to big interview really, Andre. Big, your big boy really started out, Cat. Don't get it twisted now. You ain't got it. Hey, Andre is just a. He's just an incredible artist. Oh, a big boy. He's just big, he foolish. When yeah. you come out and see Big, Big has got the. He's the big boy. He's he a big boy. He got to respect it. Look what respect And he rapped on everything. He spit. No, he was good, but, but I just, just like. I like unique. That's right. I like different. And because of that, that's why Andre's you put like out abstract. To me. Let me, let, I give me it. your top three of all time. Uh, top three of all time. I would really give like what he said. Kind of, I had to go with what he said. I did. Dirty red number really? two. Yeah, man, that was real. Um, I could go there, but Outcast definitely. Oh, did I? Did we not tell you? It's any genre. Any genre, just any my genre. Top, my top, top three, three. Any genre. Mm. It can be R and B. It can be. Calypso, well, give reggae. Me one. Say, my, <laughs> see, that's the difference. You gotta see. You gotta be like your top R and B. Your top. No, 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 no. Top no. change. Okay. Yeah. 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 Number, yeah. number one would really be this Dungeon Family period. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Like number two. Yeah. Hey, UGK. Hey, UGK. Hey, hey. 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 Ice Cube, bro. Ooh. That boy said Ice Cube. We had that before. We had an Ice Cube yeah. before. Cause Ice Cube, like the when I first started, like when as a jit, I was used to write. You know, I used to write people raps down yeah, before everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of the first people raps I ever wrote down from like <laughs> seven, eight years. I don't care. I, don't, I was under ten. I know I was writing Ice Cube lyrics down in the crib when my sister and was writing down all the R and B. Who can you run to or whatever they were writing down? I seen them writing lyrics. I'm like, I'm gonna write these raps down. Ice Cube number two. Um. I'm gonna tell y'all something too. People don't realize Snoop Dogg is really one of the yeah. biggest. Do you want to move rappers. to the West Coast? No, I just left there. But <laughs> I'm gonna do this just because Coast. I just want to throw an honorable mention in. Snoop Dogg is really like he is like the most popular rapper of all times. He so that's overseas. not his number two. He's just trying to throw He's that. A throw, he, I'm gonna throw him in. Okay then. Um, Snoop Dogg is one of the most popular rappers. You go anywhere, you see Snoop Dogg. Look at him he's doing Corona commercials. His his. Mm. his I gotta agree with that. What you like, think? You know what I'm saying? I love Snoop, man. Look at him with That's Martha Stewart. Not for about lyrics, just yeah. about all over. Okay. Over But he's not in your not top three, so I'm Okay, so who's your number two? Uh, number two? My number two. And what are we talking about again? <laughs> all <laughs> time. All, all time. time artists. You any genre, all male time. or female, okay. anybody. Um, Man, I'm, I'm gonna just say like Michael Jackson or something. You know yeah. Okay, that's number, number two, three. number three. You know, uh, I remember. I'm just going off what I remember as a jit the most. Uh, and uh, see, y'all didn't give me that question. I just answered it off the rip. I could have went to genre now. Pop. I knew you were going to say that. I knew it was yeah, going to I know all the West Coast, See, too. Y'all didn't give me that. That's crazy. No, no, that's what I'm tripping on. Yeah. I don't understand that. I like Big, too, though. No, no, no. I'm no. with my boy right here, UGK. Got, stay right, stay right there with UGK yeah. and stay yeah. right there with I mean, Goody Mob. And no, no, no. He want to change his. See, he want to change his. I just missed the Prince. Man. He wants to change his. So what is your top three? Come on. All around, then it would be Dungeon Family. Uh-huh. All Prince. Uh-huh. And then, let's see, let's diversify it. Yeah, diversify, right? Diversify. 
I, I One of my favorite songs was Achy Break Your Heart growing up. What's Wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> man. Don't break my heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? He's in number three. three. He had to be number three just because it was so different. And, and I was like 10. And that shit kept me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,